My name is Vlad, I'm the co-founder of Creative Mobile, a company based in Estonia. We used to be a small indie team of three and then five people, and we eventually evolved into a publisher of sorts, grown to around 100 people over four years. And uh, today I'm going to speak about guerrilla marketing in mobile uh, business. And I think that this topic, it kind of fits within the whole user acquisition direction, but this particular segment of app marketing has been underserved. It's not working. It's not working. One, two, one. Oh, this is so awesome. I can hear myself. Not that I enjoy hearing myself, but still. Uh, okay, where, I, where I was? Guerrilla marketing, or in other words, smart ways to attract users in mobile. Uh, first, I have to give you some background about Grave Mobile. Well, here it is. Grave Mobile four years ago, the beginning. I think this picture represents very accurately the state of our company four years ago. Three, five crazy people initialized. I wrote ideas, but my head of marketing said I shouldn't say that in the, in the presentation. So I went crazy there. We had no money, we had no experience. We were your typical hopeless indie team in their own region focusing on Android, which was tiny back then. And we decided to take the cheapest approach, make really cheap games of fairly low quality, hope that one of those games takes off. And one of those games did eventually take off big time. It was Drag Racing, April 2011, eventually became one of the I think top 10 most downloaded Android apps of all time. 100 million of the original game, 50 million downloads of ports and spin-offs were released later. And uh, it basically inspired all the subsequent drag racing games on mobile. CSR racing, Fast and Furious, basically all, all from there, from that point in, in 2011. But here we were a small team of five people with uh, sudden access to lots of users significant amounts of money, and we decided that we don't want to be a one-trick pony. We don't want to stick to this segment of racing games forever. We want to become a publisher eventually. And this, uh, we faced several challenges, and one of the fundamental challenges was how are we going to market the games? Because when you're a small team of 10 people or so, you have this awesome mindset. You can work 16-hour shifts. You have this something spe special which makes you do great things. When your company is 100 people, it's very difficult to preserve this spirit. It no longer works this way. And when you're working with third-party publishers, it's, it becomes even more difficult. So we figured that this fast failure methodology that we used to follow, basically creating lots of cheap games, it wasn't going to scale. And this, this was what the, the model a publisher can rely on. What are other options? If you ask a gaming journalist what the secret to success or key to success on mobile, many will say it's the LTV versus CPI game. You have to maximize your LTV, you have to optimize your user acquisition, and then you get rich fast, like Supercell, King, others. We see problems with that approach as well. It's like the, the other extreme. It works well for games that are designed as a service. It doesn't work for some kinds of games that are like Angry Birds, for example. It's difficult to imagine Angry Birds being converted in a game with LTV of $6 or more. It requires long-term commitment. If we're a publisher in this relationship, we have to stick with the team we chose to publish for a long time, to give them time to optimize the game, to figure out the most relevant players and target for those players. Lots of very sophisticated science in that. And not all teams can hang around for a year or so and wait for the success to come. And finally, CPI is getting higher and higher and higher. So we figured that between those two extremes, relying on luck and relying on the LTV versus CPI game, there must be something. And there's actually a lot. And uh, this is where we can learn a lot from traditional businesses. We firmly believe that game publishing is essentially the same like any other business. The only difference is that we've come to witness uh, the explosion of this industry. We've seen lots of demand. We've seen iPhone taking off, Android taking over the world. There was a lot of demand, very little supply. We have lots of success stories about indies with no money making millions out of thin air. But the, the truth is, it's going to get more balanced over time. Because there are more people with good teams, big budgets coming into this industry producing great content. Growth of demand is slowing, 
And eventually, this industry will probably be like any other industry, which is more stable, more mature. And in order to navigate in this environment, we can learn a lot from traditional businesses that have grown in that environment, in a more static industry. And one of the coolest things to, coolest ways to sell stuff anywhere is by using guerrilla marketing techniques. There's a diagram there. Don't try to read what's inside it. I stole it from some website just to show that this is a complex subject. There's a lot related to guerrilla marketing. What's important is that guerrilla marketing techniques are almost always unconventional. They are provocative. They try to grab your attention to invoke strong emotions. They are relatively low cost compared to straightforward ways like, say, TV, ad sports. And they are often leading to viral effects. So this is, in a nutshell, the topic of how we can be creative and smart in order to get lots of users at a very low cost. And I'm going to look at two cases. The first case is from our own experience. We are working on a big game. It's a game as a service it's called Nitro Nation. It's very high end. And we figured that we need to get relevant feedback from our users before we actually make the game. Because the development time frame is relatively long. And we needed a representative sample of, say, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of players before we even launched the game. So we came up with this idea of restricting access to the game, to the, to the beta, the uh, very early closed beta, to create artificially a shortage of supply. And uh, we figured that if, if we distribute a bunch of activation keys. People who receive those keys will feel special. They'll feel that they are belonging to a VIP club, and they will work towards promoting this club. Because if you have this special status, it relies on recognition. And you want other people to recognize the status. So we hope for this kind of viral effect of some people getting access to the VIP club, and then other people becoming interested in that. So we went to Gamescom. We set up a booth at Gamescom. We had other reasons to do this, but we used this as an opportunity to distribute those keys. Inside, we set up kind of gaming stations where players could play the very short demo of the game that we had at the time and uh, compete for kits with various goodies like rubber bracelets and you know, flyers, really cheap stuff, and activation keys. So we gave away 1,000 keys really quickly. We attracted attention by using the usual triggers, go, scars, free drinks, free food. So we gave away 1,000 keys very quickly. And the next thing that happened, those guys who received those keys, they went to Facebook, they went to our forums, and they started bragging about this. They're like, hey, we have this access, privileged access to a game that isn't even live yet. We are the, the elite part of the society, of this community. And everyone else was like, what's going on? Why are these guys given this privilege? And we received lots of all sorts of feedback, lots of negative feedback as well from people who are like, I've been playing your games for two years. How come you give keys to some random people, not me? What matters is that this triggered lots of activity. On our Facebook page, it was like, do, 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 do. give me the key, send me the key. I need this key. I demand this key. I will sue you if you don't give me the key. Lots of activity, lots of really emotional posts. And then other people started getting involved because they see this activity and they're like, What's going on? What's, what's all the fuss about? What keys? What game? And they become involved as well. And uh, if we look at the numbers, we gave 1,000 keys away. Shortly after the event, we got 6,500 signups. A sign-up is someone who went to our website, entered their email, and received a confirmation email from us. So that requires some work. And when we launched Close Beta, we got somewhere between 100,000 to 200,000 signups. Again, these are not your average top joy users that you buy for dollar. These are people who went to your website, gave you their contact information. They're interested in the product enough to do this, go through this trouble. And uh, we spent almost nothing on this and achieved our goal. But you might ask, OK, 100,000 users, even very relevant users, that's cool. But how do we scale it to millions or 100 millions? How do we get, get big numbers? That's my second case. Everyone's favorite over the past several weeks, Flappy Bird. If you somehow missed it, and uh, previous speakers in this, in this room haven't dissected it, the, the, the beauty of this case is that the game was somewhere near the bottom of the ranks for quite a while, then it exploded, took off, raced straight to number one spot on the, 
App Store and Google Play and stayed there for several weeks until it was pulled by the creator. And uh, I'm not going to, to, to speak about the conspiracy theories about that and the accusation of board frames and, and all that. I believe that this success is viral. And uh, the reason for that is that the game has the characteristics of a viral video. And that means it has the characteristics of guerrilla marketing techniques. Now, to get this clear, I'm not saying that this was a guerrilla marketing trick. It wasn't. It was basically luck, preparation and luck. But someone could replicate the same approach, create something with, the similar, with similar characteristics to achieve the same effect. It was made on a very small budget. It's low cost. It triggers very strong emotions, very quickly. You start playing the game, three seconds into the game, it's finished, you lose. You score miserable three, five points when your friend has 47. You feel humiliated, you're frustrated. You're like, hey, I've been playing games for like the past 10 years and I've, I've gotten used to, you know, first 30 minutes of gameplay, I have this tutorial where I can die and here, bam, three seconds, I lost. Strong emotions. Same mechanics work in viral videos. Very quickly, strong emotions. People are social. People want to share those emotions. And suddenly, at some point, this becomes cool, and virality kicks in big time. And uh, I mentioned viral videos several times. I think that this game is basically a viral video in the app package. And we know that there are viral videos created by accident, and there are smart guerrilla marketing viral videos created by brands that shock you, that entertain you, and then there's some clever product placement, some clever way of promoting the product. We can do the same thing on a big scale. The guy promised to pull the app from the store. How many downloads did he get after that? I think it was a massive boost. Now again, I'm not saying that he did it deliberately. No, no, no. But someone could use the same approach. Instead of thinking, what should I put on the screenshot? Should it be the main menu or should it be this part of gameplay or should I ask my artist to come up with a nice character? We should think about emotions we want to trigger in the player when he first interacts with our application or marketing assets with any, at any contact point with our potential customer. And uh, we can do a lot on this in, this in this field if we take this smart, creative approach. Moreover, we have to because as I said, CPI is getting high, straightforward ways to buy users at the marketplace are prohibitively expensive for most. So we have to be creative, we have to be smart, and then we can succeed big time. That's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us, uh, Vladimir. Audience, any questions about the 100 million download man up here? Oh, I think I kind of let everyone down but by not speaking about the 100 million player game like previously. But I think that things we've done in the past to get those 100 million downloads, they are no longer valid in this context, in, the, in this in 2014, sadly. So we have to come up with something else. When you say 100 million downloads are no longer valid, you don't cross-promote within your own titles? Yeah, we do, but what, what kind of help is that to everyone else? It's good for us to have 100 million players, True. but... That's not a practical advice. Guys, if you want to cross-promote efficiently, make a 100 million player game. And there you go. It's successful. True. Fair enough. Up, oh, we got a question. <laughs> no Hi. Um, do you feel um, that with the right planning, uh, any, f any game could go viral uh, or uh, get a big boost? Or uh, do you believe uh, you just have to be prepared to be there when luck strikes? Uh, so it, it, um, yeah, can it be done all with skill or will there always be an amount of luck involved? I think uh, a wise man said that luck is when preparation meets opportunity. So you have to be prepared. And I kind of, I omitted the preparation part. I used to speak about keywords and how you should optimize your screenshots and title, but this has become common knowledge. You have to do that anyway. And uh, it's, not every game can become viral, if, if that answers your question. It has to have the characteristics and 
it's always a hit and miss. Even in, you know, if you're advertising soap, for instance, a very traditional industry, as far as I can tell, they still sometimes make mistakes. Sometimes they attempt to provoke the audience and the audience doesn't accept that. You can see there's plenty of failures, but there's no other way we have to try something creative. Thank you, Vladimir.